In this video, we will look at the Graham scan algorithm to compute the convex hulk of a set of points in a plane. The Graham scan uses a different procedure to compute the convex hull. This algorithm is not based on the divide and conquer approach. Let us consider these nine points in a plane. The Graham scan algorithm identifies the lowest point in the y coordinate. In this case, it's the point i which has the lowest y coordinate. So we create a node with point i. Then we find the angle between point i and all the other points in the plane based on the x axis and consider the points sorted based on the angle. So in this case, the lowest angle is between point i and point g. So we create a node with point g. Then the next angle is between point i and point f. So we create a node with point f. Then the next angle is between point i and point e. So we create a node with point e. Then the next angle is between point i and point a. So we create a node with point a. Then the next angle is between point i and point t. So we create a node with point t. Then the next angle is between point i and point c. So we create a node with point c. Then the next angle is between point i and point h. So we create a node with point h. Then the next angle is between point i and point b. So we create a node with point b. So we have nine nodes in sequence created for all the nine points sorted based on the angle between point i and all the other points. Now these nodes that we have are the nodes of the doubly linked list. We use the doubly linked list in Graham scan because it is very easy to traverse the nodes of the doubly linked list. Then we will be scanning the nodes of the doubly linked list to compute the convex hull. So we start with the first node, which is point i. Let us call this node as p. Now we will consider three consecutive nodes of the doubly linked list. We will start with the first node and call this node as p1, that is the point i. Then the next consecutive node or the next node is point g. So we will call this point or the node as P2. And then the next consecutive node is point F. So we will call this node or point as P3. Now, joining these three consecutive nodes will form a triangle. That is from point I to point G, then from point G to point F, and then from point F to point I. If joining these consecutive nodes is in anti-clockwise direction, then these points may lie on the convex hull. So in this case, joining points i, g and f, that is point p1, p2 and p3 is in anti-clockwise direction. So we may consider these points to be part of the convex hull. Then we move to the next node in the doubly linked list. So the point p1 will be node g, then the next node is point f. We will call this node as point p2. And then the next consecutive node is point e. We will call this node or point as p3. Now, joining these three consecutive nodes will form a triangle. If joining these consecutive nodes is in clockwise direction, then we can eliminate point p2 since it cannot lie on the convex hull. Just by looking at point I, that is point P, point G, that is point P1, and point E, that is point P3, we can say that the point F, which is point P2, is an internal point. Therefore, when the triangle is formed by joining points P1, P2, P3 in clockwise direction, we can eliminate point P2 since P2 will be an internal point. So in this case, joining points G, F and E, that is points P1, P2 and P3 is in clockwise direction. So 
we eliminate point F, which is the point P2 by deleting the node F from the doubly linked list. Then, when the point is eliminated or the node is deleted, we move the point P1 to the previous point or the node P1 to previous node. So, at this stage, P1 will move to the previous point or the node, which is node I. Then again, three consecutive points will be considered to check whether they form the triangle in anti-clockwise or clockwise direction. So, at this stage, point P1 will be node I. The next node is point G. We will call this node as P2. And then the next consecutive node is point E. We will call this node or point as P3. Then joining these points I, G and E, that is points P1, P2 and P3 is in anti-clockwise direction. Therefore, we may consider these points to be part of the convex hull. Then we move to the next node in the doubly linked list. So the point P1 will be node G. Then the next node is point E. We will call this node as P2. And then the next consecutive node is point A. We will call this node or point as P3. Then joining points G, E and A, that is points P1, P2 and P3 is in clockwise direction. So we eliminate point E, which is point P2 by deleting the node E from the doubly linked list. Then when the point is eliminated or the node is deleted, we move the point P1 to the previous point. So at this stage, P1 will move to the previous point of the node, which is node I. Then again, three consecutive points will be considered. So at this stage, point P1 will be node I. Then the next node is point G. We will call this node as P2. And then the next consecutive node is point A. We will call this node or point as P3. Then joining these points I, G and A, that is the points P1, P2 and P3 is in anti-clockwise direction. Therefore, we may consider these points to be part of the convex hull. Then we move to the next node in the doubly linked list. So the point P1 will be node G. Then the next node is point A and we will call this node as P2 and the next consecutive node is point D. We will call this node our point as P3. Then joining these points G, A and D, that is points P1, P2 and P3 is an anti-clockwise direction. Therefore, we may consider these points to be part of the convex hull. Then we move to the next node in the doubly linked list. So the point P1 will be node A. Then the next node is point D. We will call this node as P2. And then the next consecutive node is point C. We will call this node or point as P3. Then joining points A, D and C, that is the points P1, P2 and P3 is in clockwise direction. So we eliminate point D, which is point P2 by deleting the node from the doubly linked list. Then when the point is eliminated or the node is deleted, we move the point P1 to the previous point. So at this stage, P1 will move to the previous point on the node, which is node G. Then three consecutive points will be considered. So the point P1 will be node G. Then the next node is point A. We will call this node as P2. And then the next consecutive node is point C. We will call this node or point as P3. Then joining these points, G, A and C, that is points P1, P2 and P3 is in anti-clockwise direction. Therefore, we may consider these points to be part of the convex hull. Then we move to the next node in the doubly linked list. So the point P1 will be node A. Then the next node is point C. We will call this node as P2. And then the next consecutive node is point H. We will call this node or point as P3. Then Joining these points A, C and H, that is points P1, P2, P3 is in anti-clockwise direction. Therefore, 
we may consider these points to be part of the convex hull. Then we move to the next node in the doubly linked list. So the point P1 will be node C. Then the next node is point H. We will call this node as P2. And then the next consecutive node is point P. We will call this node or point as P3. Then joining C, H, and B, that is points P1, P2, P3, is in clockwise direction. Therefore, we eliminate point H, which is the point P2, by deleting the node H from the doubly linked list. Then, when the point is eliminated or the node is deleted, we move the point P1 to the previous point. So, at this stage, P1 will move to the previous point of the node, which is node A. Then again, three consecutive points will be considered. So, the point P1 will be node A. Then the next node is point C. We will call this node as P2. And then the next consecutive node is point B. We will call this node or point as P3. Then joining points A, C, and B, that is points P1, P2, and P3, is in anti clockwise direction. Therefore, we may consider these points to be part of the convex hull. Then we move to the next node in the doubly linked list. So the point P1 will be node C. Then the next node is point B. We will call this node as P2. And then there is no more nodes after node B. So we do not have three consecutive points and a triangle cannot be formed. So the process ends. Now the node remaining or the points remaining in the doubly linked list is the convex hull in the anti-clockwise direction. So this is how the convex hull is constructed using the Graham scan. Let us look at the Graham scan algorithm. The Graham scan algorithm uses doubly linked lists to store the points. So the structure of the node of the doubly linked list will be defined as a point with x and y coordinates and pointer previous which is the link to the previous node of the doubly linked list and the point next which is the link to the next node of the doubly linked list. Then the convex hull algorithm will take list of points as the parameter. The first step is to sort the points according to the angle between the point with the lowest y coordinate and all other points. So we use the sort function and pass list of points as the argument. Then we need to scan the doubly linked list to compute the convex hull. This is done using the scan function and passing the sorted list of points. We will look at the scan algorithm later. Then once the scan function completes, we have the points in the list which forms the convex hull. So we use the print list function to display the points of the convex hull. So this is the convex hull algorithm using Graham scan. The actual work is done in the scan algorithm. So let us look at the scan algorithm. The scan algorithm takes list of points sorted according to the angle between the point with the lowest y coordinate and all the other points. Then we will have the statement pointer P is assigned list. That is, P will be pointing to the first node of the doubly linked list. Then we will also have the statement pointer P1 is assigned list. That is, P1 will also be pointing to the first node of the doubly linked list. Now we need to scan the entire doubly linked list. So we will have the repeat until loop with the condition as false. Then within the repeat until loop, we will have the statement P2 assign P1 arrow next to assign P2 as the next node of P1. Then we will check if there is a third node present using the if statement with the condition P2 arrow next is not equal to zero. If P2 arrow next is not equal to zero, that means there is a third node. If so, we will have the statement P3 assign P2 arrow next. Then if there is no third node, then 
we will have the else statement and return. This is because if there is no third node, that means we have scanned the entire doubly linked list and we will return. Now, if there are three points, then we need to check if they are formed in clockwise or anti clockwise direction. So, we will use the area function and pass three points P1, P2, and P3. The area function returns the area which is stored in the temp variable. Then, if the area is positive, that means if temp has a positive value, that means the triangle formed by joining the points P1, P2, and P3 is in anti clockwise direction. So, if temp is positive, that is, it is greater than zero, then we move to the next node in the doubly linked list by using the statement p1 assign p1 arrow next. Otherwise, that is, if the area that is temp is negative, then that means the triangle formed by joining the points p1, p2, and p3 is in clockwise direction. So, we will have the else block, and within the else block, we need to delete the node P2. So we will have the statement P1 arrow next assigned P3 and P3 arrow previous assigned P1. This is to maintain the links of the doubly linked list before deleting the node. Then we will delete the node P2 using the statement delete P2. Now, once the node P2 is deleted, we need to move a step back. So, we will have the statement p1 assigned p1 arrow previous so that the node p1 will be pointing to the previous node. So, this is how the convex hulk is created by using the Graham scan algorithm. Now, let us analyze the scan algorithm. This algorithm has a repeat until loop which will execute for at most n times for n number of nodes in the doubly linked list. Therefore, the time complexity of the scan algorithm will be O of n. Now, let us look at the time complexity of the convex hull algorithm. The convex hull algorithm has first statement which sorts the points. The sort function takes O of n log n as the time complexity. Then, we have the scan algorithm which takes O of n as the time complexity which we have seen. Then the print statement is a primitive function. Therefore, the overall time complexity of the Graham scan algorithm is O of n log n. So, this is how the Graham scan works and this is its algorithm.